Mr. Burleson, you're recognized for five minutes. Secretary Becerra, um, according to the Congressional Budget Office, they estimate that the, the ACA plans cost the taxpayers three times as much as, a, as, a, as an employer-sponsored plan. With that being said, is it, is it beneficial or better that we would encourage um, more, more policies to migrate towards an employer-sponsored plan as opposed to the ACA? Congressman, remember, there's a difference between an employer-sponsored plan, an ACA plan, the Medicare program, Medicaid. All of them are different. The reason that there may be a greater cost in an ACA plan is because these are individuals that don't work for a large employer, can't take advantage of the large uh, pool of employees that would be part of a system. The employer gets discounts because they're bringing a whole bunch of people into the system. Under and the wouldn't it be great if we if if we get the if they get the discount? The taxpayers win, they win. Yeah, yeah. Is but that not a good deal? It would have been great. But remember, before the Affordable Care Act came into play, all these folks couldn't find insurance because the insurance carriers well, they wouldn't did. offer I them mean, insurance. Arguably, I mean, th arguably, we had high-risk pools, and I don't want to get into that. That's that's pretty detailed stuff. But wouldn't it be great if we found a way to reduce the employer-sponsored plans by 29%? Reducing then it would the be, cost then of obviously, more people could be able to afford to get access to health insurance. Reducing the cost of health care would be a great Especially thing for Especially in the American. private market. And then it would save the taxpayers even more, right? Because we're not, no longer paying for them to be on the ACA. The more people are insured, the less it costs all of us. So um, we have... The, the, the Association Health Plans, which was, was an innovative idea, um, they have, a lot of the associations in America have had a longstanding interest in allowing them to, themselves to combine lives to create those larger pools that you're talking about. And in 2018, the Department of Labor issued a final rule to expand access to, a, to these associated health plans, um, which actually did reduce the cost of insurance premiums by 29%. But just recently, the Department of Labor issued a final rule to rescind that 2018 rule. Um, how do you think that that's going to have an impact on the costs and the access of affordable care for, for patients? And recognize that the actions that you're speaking about were done by the Department of Labor, not by the Department of Health and Human Services. But I can, what I can tell you about uh, the various types of uh, offerings, health insurance offerings that are out there, what you want to make sure is they all provide a core level of services, the basic level of essential services that anyone would want. Preventative care, for example, uh, maternal health care, uh, natal care. We want to make sure that you're providing the basic services. If you start to go outside of the Medicare program, Medicaid program, employer insurance, or the Affordable Care Act, you start to get into the weeds uh, and the gray areas where these providers of these plans can avoid providing some of those basic I, services. I, That's I, the problem with some of these association-based plans. No, I, I absolutely disagree. I, there's, there's no difference between an associated-based plan. When they go out to bid for, for pricing- oh, I guarantee you there with, are big differences. Th there's a difference because they're, they're able to negotiate in bulk. I have a, some, a different line of questioning I want to get to before time expires. Last year, you testified before this committee, and I asked about the 85,000 uh, unaccompanied alien children that your department was not able to regain contact with. Um, you made repeated comments that the moment that you were able to place them with the vetted sponsor, you lose custody. Um, it, but, you, but you do attempt to call them, correct? Yes. How many have you been able to contact? Well, I, I would say that the majority we contact at some point, whether it's the child or the sponsor. Do you sponsor, have a number? I could try to get you a number. Because again, they don't have to. They're you, not under. They're under no obligation did, to reach out to us. You did prep for this, right? Like you, that last year, that was a course of dialogue questions that you got a lot of questions yeah, about. And yeah. so I assume that you were. I prep for budget. Questions, okay. Budget questions. Right. So you would say that this is this is a concerning. You would agree that it's concerning the number of children that we're not able to to identify. What I'm concerned is that members in Congress continue to ask me if I'm concerned. I would ask you, are you concerned enough to give us authority so we could actually track these kids? Because we don't have authority to track them. D let we me ask make this an question. effort, when but it's a voluntary effort. When you're placing these children, do you, ask, do, you, do you ascertain whether or not the, the homes that they're being placed into, that they are able to actually work, that they're eligible to legally work in the United States? Is that one of the questions you ask? Children should not be working. They should be going to school. No, I'm asking because why would you place them in a home where they where they, no one can provide any kind of 
Oh, no, no, we, you cannot become a sponsor if you indicate that you don't have the wherewithal and, to support And that child. means that they're, that they're able to legally work in the United States? Uh, you verify that? We make sure that they have the income that would be needed to care for the child. That's legally. part of the vetting process. Legally. You know, we, we are not INS, or we're not, we're not the Department of Homeland Security. Our job is to find someone who can care for Surely this child. Surely you could connect with them. My time has expired. Thank you. Ms. Omar, you're recognized for five minutes. Uh, 